Medical Research Lab, my two most important tools are Shodda and Horja. And no, they're not just instruments you'll find on a shelf, like a microscope or a Bunsen burner. In Bengali, these translate to respect and patience. But the English words feel too flat. Shota is giving complexity the room it needs before trying to understand it. Horjo is wading through uncertainty until the answer shows up. When I was eight, I went with my grandmother to the doctor. The doctor said her cough was persistent and I had to translate. In Bengali, one word made it sound dangerous and the other made it sound mild. While neither felt right, I chose the softer one, but I always remembered that moment. That experience taught me how to sit with uncertainty. And that soon followed me into research. In science, results often carry that same ambiguity. Bengali is a language where words bend depending on context. And growing up bilingual taught me how, and trained me how to pause and before choosing and to weigh options carefully. In science, experiments can point in different directions, and data often resist simple explanations. While data can resist simple explanations, it is important to weigh context more evenly, find spots within our judgment, and continue as something worth, as uncertainty, is something worth sitting in. Later, I found that my way of thinking wasn't my perspective alone. My family, who carried the same instinct to weigh options carefully, later in studies, I found that peers Later in reading studies and watching peers in research, I saw the same instinct. People who spoke more than one language often carried the instinct to hold multiple meanings in play, resist the easy answer, and settle into something worth settling into an option that holds uncertainty as something worth sitting in. In a world that prizes quick certainty, the ability to pause and hold an uncertain answer a little longer might be the most valuable tool of all. That curiosity sparked my interest and pushed me to explore why bilingual minds might work this way. And the answer I found was simple. Bilingualism rewires the brain. Multiple studies point to how bilingualism can alter the brain. A 2022 study from Fudong University of Technology found that when explored, when people speak more than one language, they think differently. And because these people think differently, these researchers found that they have greater
greater cognitive flexibility, which is the ability to shift perspectives when faced with a problem, and greater cognitive inhibition, which is the ability to not seize the easiest answer too quickly. Other research pointed to similar advantages. Professors at the University of Chicago found that bilinguals have a greater advantage in adapting to social situations and ultimately giving them an advantage in seizing the day and um, being able to adapt in more than just research, but in the social situations that they're in. Now, well, we can't have, so how do we do it? Well, the first step is to step outside of our comfort zone. Don't just stop at Ola, at your favorite Mexican restaurant. Take that step and even if your words sound broken, make the attempt to actually communicate. are losing our languages. Every two weeks, somewhere in the world, a native language disappears. Each language carries a blueprint for how to see the world and how to solve problems. When we, when a language is lost, that toolkit vanishes too. We lose not only a cultural treasure, but a way of thinking. In the Amazon, many indigenous languages contain the terms for plants with medicinal properties. When we lose these languages, we risk losing the words for cures and treatments that other languages and that modern medicine hasn't yet discovered. In Navajo, the language that U.S. forces used during World War II as an unbreakable code, metaphors drawn from the natural world shaped how speakers talk about balance, resilience, and responsibility. The Navajo code talkers were able to protect American soldiers in battle. And this shows us how the protection of one language and one community's words can protect the survival of us all. After all, for science because complex research needs patience and creativity. It matters for diplomacy because it matters for diplomacy because conflicting resolutions demand different perspective taking. It matters for every big issue we face as a planet. Because no single way of thinking is enough. After all, the biggest uniter of the 21st century won't be a political group or a corporation or an ideology. It will be the ability to find common ground, to speak each other's languages, even imperfectly, and find that common ground with 
share.